receive all thy praise. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for yet mm. another week. We Amen. praise the Lord for your life. We thank God for all your comments, and we thank God for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon you. Mm. We know God has blessed you. That's why you keep tuning in. And we, we know the comments that we are getting. We know the emails. Keep sending them. Facebooks. Keep mm. facing booking us. Keep doing all the things you are doing. Keep coming to the church service. Keep coming because... You can bear the wit bear witness of the presence of God in the church. Amen. You can bear it. You can bear it. You, you know, you can bear witness. And a lot of people are blessed. Mm. Anytime they come to action, they say, oh, God lives here. Amen, <laughs> amen. Somebody amen. said that God goes around and he comes and stay there. So we thank God for that. Amen. Uh, and today we are going to continue. You remember the Lazarus story that we started and uh, the experience between Lazarus and and the dead Lazarus with the sisters Mary and, and Martha and Jesus, the living Savior, who says that he is the resurrection and the life. And um, mm. he came after Lazarus has been dead for four days. And he told Martha that your brother shall live again. And Martha went ahead thinking that on, to the, on the day of resurrection or on the day of the judgment. Mm. But Jesus was talking about his hair breakthrough and his miracle will be now immediate. and in, immediate and somebody you are watching and you also feel like maybe not now god is not going to bless me now but maybe later on but the lord want me to tell you that your blessing is mm. now Amen. you are not going to wait any longer because you waited for too long and as you keep tuning and keep watching these programs it will redirect your life and it will really put you in the right track mm. And you'll be blessed instantly. And I'm praying for the instant blessings over you. The peace of God should come into your mm. homes and your life. I pray that every migraine, every sickness and illness, heartbeat problem, heart attack, whatever it is that, that was troubling you before, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that may that leave your body now. Amen. Now we are going to listen to 
how Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb. It, this, 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 this is a very interesting thing. Please don't, mm. don't, don't run, don't go anywhere, and God is going to bless you, honey. Amen. So we are reading verse John chapter 11, verse, we'll start with verse 26. Mm. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This is Jesus talking to Martha. Mm -hmm. Believest thou this? And Martha responded, she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So Jesus is talking about eternal life. Even after, after the judgment, you'll be living in heaven with him. And she's asking, and she's asking, and he is asking Martha, do you believe in this? Do you believe that by believing in me, you get eternal life? And mm -hmm. she is saying, yes, I believe you, Lord. Yeah. I believe in you. I believe that you are the Christ. You are the son of God. You know, and that is all Jesus wants us believers to believe. Yeah. That is all he wanted the Pharisees to acknowledge and to accept. Mm. And here is this woman telling him that, yes, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. And in, within her, she's full of sorrow. Within her, her brother has just died for, for four days now. And she knew that Jesus could have come earlier, but he delayed. And she, she, she may not understand, but still... When Jesus asked, do you believe I am the son of God? She gave him that respect. She worshipped and she honoured him. You know, even though you failed me, even though you didn't come when I needed you to come, you are still God. You are still the son of God. You are still the redeemer. You are still my saviour. And that is Jesus just testing her. That is Jesus testing her faith to, to see if through her trouble she will still acknowledge who Jesus is. And that is what we all must learn from this woman. I just love this woman. Martha, I know my husband prefers Mary. I also, pre I also like Mary, but Martha's, Martha's commitment is, is to Christ is, is just so wonderful at this particular point. And we should all learn from Martha, all learn from her that through our troubles, through whatever we're going through, we should always give the glory to God. We should always give the glory to Jesus and always accept and acknowledge who he is despite the hardships we are going through. Wow, that's awesome. So I, we read on, 28 says that, John chapter 11, verse 28, And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The master is come, and calleth for thee. It is, this is the thing that I love about Jesus Christ. Jesus wants worshippers. Martha, when Martha heard about Jesus Christ, Martha ran out of his house, her house to go and meet Jesus and launch her complaint and all the conversation that went on with on what you've explained. But now Jesus sent Martha, Martha, go home and call Mary for me. You see, because Jesus knew that Mary is going to come out with something that I need. And, and, and let, 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 let me continue mm -hmm. with this. So, so what happened is that Martha went and called Mary secretly. The master has come and is calling you. So that the whole crowd will not follow Mary. Jesus wanted intimacy. Mm -hmm. You see, what you do early on in your house, that is what will be exposed when you come out. If you are a man of God and you spend a lot of time privately, intimately with Jesus Christ, when mm. you, you mount a pulpit, it will be seen that this man spends many hours with God. If you don't, they will not see it. So, Jesus desired for Mary. Oh, I love this. Something is happening. Jesus. And then hear this. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly, came unto him, 30. Now, Jesus was not yet come into the town. Oh, praise God. Into the town place where Martha met him. Now, hear this. Martha went home, spoke to Mary, that the master is calling you. She heard that the master has come and is calling. Quickly, 
She snapped out of crying. She stopped crying. She stopped complaining. She stopped feeling sorry for herself. She stopped everything that was belittling her. She even stopped listening to the voices of the people around her who was trying to calm her. Oh, Mary, it's okay. No, no, no. When you hear the voice of the Lord, it will cause you to stop all the pity parties and all the things that is good. Because when God speaks, something is going to happen. Mm. So, so she stopped it and then she quickly rose up and she said, no, my master is here. My Lord is here. I am going to hear what he has to say because his words are final. If he says that Lazarus is dead and that's it, then that's it. But if he said Lazarus shall live again, then Lazarus shall live again. Mm. That is a very powerful something. Mm. And, and I, I, bear, bear with me, honey. I want to take 31, and, and I think there's something there, something very juicy I want to squeeze out of this so that we can be blessed. Somebody, you are watching this, and the Lord is saying that until he speaks, the case is not close. 31. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and, come, uh, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she, uh, she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying she goeth unto the grave to weep there. So now the Jewish people that were in the house trying to comfort Mary, they thought that Mary was going to the grave of, Nazar uh, of Lazarus and to weep there. You know, people like pity parties. People like uh, weeping. People, people like mm -hmm. this kind of thing because uh, um, human beings, we, we, a large, large part of our, our, our heart is full of sorrows. So people are drawn to, you know, sorrowful issues. If you look at some of the good movies that people like, movies that breaks you down in tears. You know, people like this kind of things because the, the world is, is, is unexplainable. Life is unexplainable and life is, it has this kind of uh, pain and, and plagues. Mm. So people always connect to people that are in sorrow. They can feel for people that are in sorrow, but yeah. people despise somebody who is happy. Mm. When you are happy, you get more enemies. When you are in pain mm. and you are in sorrow, you get more friends. So this is what is happening. The, Jesus has not come, he has not entered actually into Bethany yet. No. Because Martha met Jesus outside. Now, Mary is going to the same place to meet Jesus. Mm. So take it on. Verse 32, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and mm. saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. So here is emotional Mary running mm. up to Jesus. She has finally, finally seen Jesus. And she falls down at his feet and starts immediately battling her complaints to Jesus that if he had just come earlier, her brother would have lived. And it, it, shows, it shows humility at the same time because she falls down at his feet. She prostrates herself at his feet in in, in humility, but still her burden, she just has to cry it out to the Lord Jesus. And that is what the Lord Jesus loves. When we, when we get down on our feet, when we get down on the ground, and then we just prostrate ourselves to him and, 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 and tell him exactly what is on our minds. And um, I was discussing earlier with my husband that this is in co big contrast to Martha, where Martha was more diplomatic she she was more diplomatic with her complaint she didn't just come right out and give it to jesus but 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 mary emotional just had to open up and just had to pour mm. it out to the lord jesus wow that is great so 33 when jesus therefore saw her weeping and the jews also weeping which came with her he groomed in his spirit and was troubled now, here this, uh, I need to break this thing down because uh, we have seen the difference between Martha and Mary, the approach. You see, take two people who have the problem, P two people who have the same problem. The way we approach God is very important with our prayers. Martha approached Jesus with an attitude. The attitude was like, if you would have come earlier on, my brother wouldn't have died. So God, indirectly, you have failed me. That's what he's saying. And when Jesus said that, oh, but don't, don't, don't be so hasty to judge because your brother shall live again. He said, yeah, I know my brother will live again, but in the day of resurrection. 
And Jesus could not connect with Martha because Martha was, was not really synchronizing with Jesus Christ. He wasn't going on the same. So Jesus then said, okay, if you, if you cannot get what, what I'm getting, that's why Jesus asked her, do you believe what I'm saying? And the, the answer she gave was, yeah, I believe, I believe. But the belief, the belief that Jesus was waiting for, it should be in action, that you act into the belief. But Martha was not able to illustrate that kind of faith that Jesus was looking for. So Jesus asked her to go and bring the sister. Because Jesus knew that the sister has the right heart. Because uh, you will get to know earlier um, in some time to come that you see that when many times Jesus came to the house, Mary will be sitting at Jesus' feet and will be listening to the, all the words of Jesus Christ. Whilst Martha is busy around, going around, trying to impress. So, okay, that's another time we want to get down. Mm. But now when Mary came, Mary first of all didn't complain. She went before the Lord with worship. Now, you have to treat, sometimes I say that we have to approach God like the way we men we approach our, our wives. <laughs> you know, it will, if I want a special dish for my wife, it will be nicer when I come, oh, honey, you know, you're looking very beautiful. You Naturally, you're beautiful, but you know, you're very beautiful. Honey, wow, the way you're looking today, I wish you could do me that soup you did the last <laughs> time. You know, she will go and cook with all her love. Mm. And that is how we have to approach God. You see, Mary came and she just smoothly said, oh, Lord, I worship you. My brother is dead. But I'm worshiping you. Mm. My, I have a problem, but my problem can wait. I'm worship. If you can do that to God, I tell you, God will step in your case and God will fight for you Amen. and God will deliver you. So when she did that, the first approach is that when we are going before God with any request, we must have worship, be in the mood of worship. Now you worship God for who He is. That God, you are Almighty. Even if you don't raise my brother or you don't solve my case or you don't do it, I'm worshiping you for being God. Mm. You are God. We praise God for what he's about to do and for what he has already done. But we worship God for who he is. Mm. So Mary understands the deity and the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. She just fell down and worshiped. And the Bible says the next thing that she did was that she now just didn't fall down worshiping but now she broke down in tears. Now, when was the last time you cried for God? When was the last time you wept? You weep when a man leaves you. You weep when your woman leaves you. You weep when you lose money. You, lo you weep for everything else. But uh, have you wept? When was the last time you wept for God? That God, uh, I am weeping because I need more of you. I am weeping because mm. I did a touch from you. I want you to endow me with power. Mm. When was the last time you wept? For God, mm. not for Anna. Look at the things you wept for. You wept for your friends and you wept for everything else, but you don't weep for God. So number two, point number two, you need to weep sometimes. Because the Bible says that God, God cherished the broken hearted, mm. the contrite hearted. The heart that is not boastful, but the heart that is broken before the Lord. Mm. A contrite heart is what God seeth. Now the mm. third thing she did was that, she started weeping, and then her way of weeping affected all her friends. That means that number three things that you need a group of people in your life that can weep with you, that can worship with you. You know, it, it, that's why you, church, that is the group that stands for church. Mm -hmm. That you need a place when you have the crisis, you can go and you'll be encouraged. Be, I mean, a lot of things is happening to people's life. But when they come to church, motivation is given, mm. hope is given, strength is given. Where do you go? If you have a bunch of people around you who don't believe in God, you will be more depressed and you will be more confused and you, you will be more frustrated. So it is three points mm. before you get your breakthrough. Now, mm. look at this. On the, after using, applying these three things, look at what happens. Now, they move Jesus. Mm. If you want to move God into your situation, you have to apply this thing. Worship, breaking down. That means your heart is open before God. You are not hiding anything. You are front with God. Frank with God. That mm. God, I did it. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I want you to help me. Lord, deliver me from this problem. And you weep. And then you have a group of people who are also weeping with you. Unto God on the same matter. 
on the same case, you will move God. Amen. And when he moved Jesus, the next thing here, Jesus moved, groaned in his spirit, said, ah, you've touched me. You need to touch God. Mm. And when you touch God, then he will move. Mm. And, and was troubled. Now, Jesus was troubled. Can you, can, you can weep in a way that you can cause God to be mm. troubled. Mm. Now, God is the almighty God. Why does he have to be troubled? God gets troubled when he says, ah, I need to do this mm. thing because you fulfill the three, the three points. Mm. Worship me in spite of your problem. You wept. And everybody around you, you've convinced them that I'm the only one that mm. can save you. So now, since you've now hit these three strikes, I'm going to move for your sake. And he said, I'm troubled. Now look at the next thing he's saying. And Jesus said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Mm. You see, it's a big difference between how Martha treated the whole thing and how Mary treated Mary moved Jesus and Jesus said that now you've troubled me. You've, you've touched my spirit in a different way. You've done something to me. Now, that now I want to know where the problem is so I can go and solve it. Mm. Do you know how it feels when you are crying about something and God said, that, what is it that you want me to do for you? Do you know, it's like God is asking you, now, what will you have me do for you? Then you can give him the long list that you have. But you have to move him first. And then they told Jesus, Come and have a look. Come and see the situation. Come and see what is making me cry. Come and see what has troubled me. Mm. Come and see why I'm not happy. Come and see. Mm. And I pray that you will do the same thing. And the Lord will speak to you. And the Lord will direct mm. you. And go Amen. Ahead. Verse 35. Jesus wept. 36. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Mm. So here, here, here is Jesus who, with all confidence, knew that he was going to a place to meet a dead man. He knew he was going to resurrect this dead man. But through the actions of Mary and the people around here, mm -hmm. it caused him to actually break down and weep in front of everybody. And everybody knew just how much Jesus had loved Lazarus. They knew that they saw him weeping, so they automatically thought that, ah, it is because he's weeping because he loved Lazarus so much. But his weeping, the way I, can, I see it is that he was weeping was because of the brokenness of the people in front of him, mm. because of the brokenness of Mary, of how she prostrated herself on the ground, of how the people around her too were in so much pain. And, and this, is, this is one of the great, great chapters of when Jesus himself was so broken down. Mm. Most actions by humanity that Jesus faced was, was, were people who, who were hard to him, who did not believe in him. But here you actually see him weeping. The only other time I've seen Jesus weep or Jesus in such pain, in such sorrow, was when he was about to go to the cross. When he was about yeah. to go to the cross. And, and, and here he is. Here he is because of the actions of one woman and her supporters, her gatherers who were following him, who were crying out were crying out to him about the brother who they had lost and caused him to to weep so so i love it when he says that he groaned in the spirit mm. how can we here cause on earth god. in this day and age mm. cause god cause jesus to also groan in the spirit mm. what is it that we have to do to cause him to groan in the spirit and just like apostle said that it's very important that we worship him we lift up his name that we, we 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 fellowship in the house of god with other people and we cry out together to our lord and savior jesus christ and we can also make him groan in the spirit groan in the spirit for our situation that whatever we are going through he himself will actually weep and know that enough is enough we've gone through too much we have been through through this, through this problem for a long time. We've had it for a long time, and it, it is time for a change. It is time for our lives to change. It is time mm -hmm. for deliverance. Our situation should be changed, that this is the time. So that is what we have to strive to do. Wow. There's a lot. There's a lot of meat on your plates now. But God is your help. Amen. Now, 37 says that, And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died. Mm. So whilst now Jesus have asked them that where have you laid Lazarus, the body? 
the dead body, the problem. You know, sometimes all of us go through the same thing that the people around were saying. In, with the tears on their face and everything, they were still saying, ah, this man, he was able to open the blind, their eyes. He was able to heal these people. He was able to do that. This mighty man, Jesus Christ, couldn't he has caused that Lazarus couldn't have died? Because, you see, what God is about to do is to let them know that there is no end. He is the end. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. So until he brings an end, there's no end. Death is not the end. Death of any, anything can become the beginning. So he wanted them to understand that just because the being is dead, it doesn't mean that I'm powerless, but I still have the power to resurrect the thing that we call dead, put life into it, and let it work again. So they were thinking, could he has hindered? Because it's in humanity, we think to the point of death. We think death is the end. Mm. But Jesus sees beyond that, that mm. death is not the end. Death can be the beginning. So let's, let's, let, mm. let, let me add one more to it. 38. And, and death, Jesus, therefore, uh, again, grown in himself, cometh to the grave. It was cave and a stone laid upon it. So when Jesus heard that they were saying that, couldn't this man, Jesus Christ, hinder the death of Lazarus when he heard that and he went like oh they've said it again they've moved me again mm. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying you need to move God you see sometimes uh, you have to move God to do something that he was supposed to do later on you can move God in a way and so when they, they said that again on his way to the grave they said it again and then when he came to the grave he saw that the place it was caved in it was caved so the body had, there is a rock. The, the, the tomb is a rock. Normally, at uh, those days, they, they, chisel. What they, call they chisel a, a rock, they make a cave out of it, and then they will, they will do a, a stone, and then when they put the body in, um, and then they will cover it. So the, Jesus came, and he saw that this is a cave. And, and the, the reason why the Bible wants to make it clear to mm -hmm. us that it's a cave it is very difficult. After the thing has been sealed, it is very difficult mm. to break out and to come out. So it's, it's, it's trying to, the, the, the writer is trying to make it clear to you how difficult, how the situation was. It was almost impossible for mm. any other thing to happen. Right. Verse 39, Jesus said, take, a, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, mm. saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead for four days. So here is Jesus giving a command, saying that, take, away the, take away the stone, take away the entrance to the cave, because he wanted to go in. And then Martha, <laughs> Martha immediately came and said that if that were to happen, the whole place, would be stinking because yeah. the situation was was too far and there was no hope in this situation and here here is her looking not really understanding and seeing mm. what jesus meant meant because all she was thinking about was the physical that he had been dead for days and he was thinking too much mm. and by removing that stone and going in the whole place would would stink and 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 that is was her concern but jesus was looking at it in a in a spiritual manner Man. Because he knew exactly what he was there for. He knew he was there to resurrect Lazarus. Mm. And you see, this is how I, I keep saying that sometimes we, should, we shouldn't be so diplomatic about our problems, you see. Um, so what if your, your, the, the problem is thinking that everybody is smelling your problem? Still allow God to be God. Amen. Because sometimes when your problem is thinking, you want to cover it up and you have a stinking problem that is covered. <laughs> you don't want it. Bring it before God and let God know that this is my problem. And God says that let it be, let it be open. Let it be open. Bring it to church. Announce it. Let people pray with you. Sometimes you sit on the problem and the problem is thinking. And everybody can see that you have a problem and the problem is thinking. And you want to be very diplomatic about it. But at the end of the day, you lose and you are still in your problem and you are not getting help. Mm. So just as Martha, with the same spirit of unbelief, not believing that Jesus is talking about my brother or your brother will live now, still was saying that, not now. 
And Jesus was taking away the stone, was asking him to roll away the, the stone for, to make things easier for the one who is lying dead to walk out. Mm. Because the way they cover the stone, they seal it. So the, 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 the ghost or whatever, the being that is dead that is in there cannot come out. No. It is easier to take away the stones from outside. Mm. Because there, there will be a keystone, a keystone that when that one moves first, then the other ones can be rolled away. So, but the people from, if, if you are locked in the cave, it will be impossible for you to come out because there's no way you can push the stone. You wouldn't know the right one. But there's a stone that is the chief cornerstone. That when that one is pulled out, mm. it will be easy for you to, to move. roll away. Yes. All right. So, so let's continue. Mm. Verse 40. Verse 40 says that, Jesus saith unto her, Set I not unto thee, that if thou would b believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So Jesus was telling Martha that, didn't I tell you earlier on that if you should believe, you will see the glory of God? Martha, why are you still not believing? Why, 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 Where is your faith? Yeah, why are you still having doubts in your, in your life that God cannot help you in this situation? Stop believing because God can. He can. Mm. Even though you think your case is dead. Somebody, you think your case, your case has been sealed and is dead. So there's nothing that can come about. I want you to believe that mm. God is still in your matter. Amen. 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. 42. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So, now, I believe, at this point, I believe Mary will give the, the, the young man sign, please take away the stone. Even though that matter is blocking the people from taking away the stone, Mary will Mary will talk to the sister, 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 oh sister, please allow, allow the stone to be moved away. This is Jesus. If he said oh. the stone should be moved away, let the stone be moved away. And then mm. the stone was moved. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Now Jesus lifted up his voice and looked up into heaven and he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to open my mouth to pray. But for the sake of the people who are standing around me, that is why I am audibly speaking. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking. But you have already revealed to me that Lazarus, I will just call his name mm. and he will come forth. Mm. Mm. But I just want to speak so that the people around. So Jesus was saying that, I thank you, Father, that you always hear me. Mm. So this is the point that you can believe that heart desire prayers are also answered by God. Mm. It was the heart desire of Jesus Christ that Lazarus should resurrect and to, to walk out. Mm. So it has been a request that has gone to God the Father. Mm -hmm. And it has been granted. So Jesus has already gotten the approval. There are prayers that when you pray, you can get the answer instantly. You can know that this prayer, God has answered it. You can know, you can feel it. I get what I'm saying. So Jesus knew that the prayer has been answered. But then he went on to say that, I know you always answers me, but because of the people who are standing around me, I want to just speak out. Mm. That means you even answers my thoughts and my, and my heart desires. But just for the people to know that I prayed and the person came out, and that the people will believe that you, you God, you are in communion with me. You speak to me. That is why I want to open my mouth and to say that, to say whatever I'm mm. about to say. 43, and when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come, come forth. forth. 44, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. So by just uttering, Lazarus, come forth, here is the dead man all wrapped up in white linen, gets up and starts to walk towards them just by Jesus uttering, come forth. But before Jesus even uttered the come forth, we have to take note that he thanked his father in heaven. You know, he gave, he gave worship unto the father in heaven. Now, if Jesus is, even if Jesus is doing that, what, what about us? Before we, 
before we get in the presence of God, we have to always thank him. Mm -hmm. Thank him that despite what we're going through, despite what has just happened, mm -hmm. we still will thank him. And also, we have to also speak in faith because he spoke in faith, Lazarus, come forth. So we have to call forth our breakthroughs. Yeah. We have to call forth our deliverances. We have to claim it. Mm. You know, we should, we, we should, we should read this and, and, and take heed with what Jesus is actually doing physically and apply it to our lives that, that when we give him the praise, when we give him the worship, we can call our situations to come into being. That whatever we're going through, we should confess it with our mouths that it is well, we are healed, we are delivered. We should constantly confess it in a positive manner and it will be manifested. Amen. 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. So you see, many that came before, that they were coming there just to weep, to join the pity party and to go, uh, now their mind has changed because Jesus was able to call out the dead over four days and the dead walked out. And even though the, last, the Bible said Lazarus walked out, bound, still, still he's alive, but he's bound. Now I pray that anyone watching this program and you are bound by any demon, I command the demon to go so that mm. you be loose in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Thank you, Jesus. I call forth your breakthrough. Mm. I call forth your, your finances to yes. be resurrected. Thank I you, call Jesus. forth peaceful marriage. I call Thank forth you, good health. Thank you, Jesus. I call forth the blessings of the Most High. I mm. call forth for the glory upon your life. I call forth for the uh, um, mm. endowment of power, that you will walk in the power, the resurrection power of Christ, mm. that you begin to do miraculous things. You Amen. will lay your hands upon Thank the sick Jesus. and the sick Thank shall be healed. You, you will lay your hands upon the dead and the dead shall resurrect. Mm. You will lay your hands upon problems and the problems shall be solved because mm. of the power that has been transferred upon you right now. Thank As you Jesus. are hearing these words, Jesus. everybody under the sound of my voice, mm. may you come forth into the glory of the power of God. Yes, Lord Jesus. And then many people will believe mm. after God has touched you. Mm. 46. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and the council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Now, some people, after seeing what Jesus did, calling the dead from the grave, instantly begin to believe. They said, this, is, this Jesus is the man. This is the new man we, are, we ought to follow. So now, the synagogues has been empty. But some of them left the presence of Jesus Christ and went to report to the Pharisees that, listen, the guy Jesus... Is doing so much, he has even resurrected this man, Lazarus. So instantly, the Pharisees, the scribe, they called the council. Mm. And all of them sat together. And then they started deciding, now what are we going to do? Because this man is still doing many miracles. Let there be many miracles in your life. Amen. That will cause demons to flee. Mm. Let there be many miracles in your life. That will call witches and wizards mm. to flee. Amen. That will, they will make them know that God is with you. Mm. So now they wanted to know, how are we going to treat this man? How are we going to treat Jesus? Because the man is emptying all the synagogues and everybody is following him. <laughs> you read the next one because it will make it clear over there. Mm. Verse 48, mm. if we let him thus alone, mm -hmm. all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So <laughs> here are them so insecure, mm. so confused that Jesus is actually going to come and rule over them mm. as a king. And everybody and all the people and all the Jews are all going to follow him, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, will be left without a job, will be left without position, will be left without their, their stature and their, and their prestige and, and, and their wealth. So they mm -hmm. were thinking of them, themselves that if he can do all these miraculous and wonderful things, mm -hmm. then there is no way that these people 
will not leave him alone, will not dishonor him, will not regard him how we are regarding him. So it was at this point that they, they knew that they had to seriously start thinking, how do we stop this man? How do we limit this man or prevent him from fulfilling his calling, from fulfilling his destiny? Mm. For the nice thing, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all. So now Caiaphas have listened to all the grumbling and all the complaining and all the discussion that went on. And he just shook all of them and said, listen, all of you, you don't know anything. Mm. And I look at, look at his counsel. 50, verse 50. He said, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this speaking not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus Christ should die for that nation. Mm. So Caiaphas was saying that, don't you people know that it is better we kill Jesus than we losing the whole nation? Because what is happening with this man Jesus, if we should allow him to continue in the miracles and the power, the, the, the demonstration and the manifestations of God that we are seeing this man have, don't you know that the Romans will come and, and clear our nation and push us to the side and we will lose our power, we will lose our job. But it is better that we crucify this man and then we can maintain our peace. Mm. So Caiaphas was prophesying the death of Jesus mm, Christ. Mm. And he, they, they thought that they were doing something evil to him, to hurt him. But they, they didn't know that the words were put in Caiaphas' mouth to speak it out because until you speak, nothing will happen. Mm. Until you speak onto your problem, the problem will not be solved. You need to speak life into your problem, even though it looks dead. You need to speak into your marriage, speak into your finances, speak into your job search. Speak into everything that you want. Speak positively and something is going to happen. That is the power that God has put in your mouth. He says that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. And if you don't speak, nothing is going to happen. So even the people who are conniving against you, what the things that they speak, if you don't speak something differently against what they are sp saying, their words will stand mm. and your words will, 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 will fail. So you need to be speaking. Speak back when they mm. speak mm. negative. You speak back. You speak. Speak. Mm. <laughs> All right. Verse 52. Mm -hmm. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Mm -hmm. So here he's, he's going on to say that it is not just their nation. their nation that Jesus is gathering the people, but he will gather children, children of God from all over. And that his, I can put it that Jesus' army eventually mm -hmm. will be so great and so mighty. So what they had to do was quickly, quickly crucify Jesus before this thing was established. Mm -hmm. 53. Let me speed up a little bit. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. So from that day, they all got, joined their minds and that let's kill Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, 54. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim and there continued with his disciples. 55, and Jesus, and, and the Jews, Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out, out of the country unto Jerusalem before the Passover to pur purify themselves. So Jesus, now being highly wanted in Jerusalem, Judea, that area, he went to a, a nearby country called Ephraim, and uh, Ephraim is one of the sons of, uh, of Jacob. But now he says that, uh, so the Jewish, the Jewish Passover was nigh. So a lot of people will leave their countries from different, different places and they will come to Jerusalem to come and celebrate this, mm -hmm, th mm -hmm. this event. Mm. So you can read the last two verses and then we'll pray. 56, then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that he will not come to the feast? 57, now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man know where he were, he should show it, that
that they might take him. Mm -hmm. So here they are. They knew that definitely Jesus can't stay away from the temple. Yeah. Jesus always, always comes, even at the last minutes. So they were there waiting, and they had given a word round to all the people that if any man spots where Jesus is, they should come and tell him so that he might be captured. So they were laying ambushment for Jesus. Now, now they were being more aggressive because it's not just them trying to grab Jesus, but they had actually told a lot of people, not the soul, just a lot of the common folk, a lot of the common people that if anybody spots this Jesus, beware, come and tell us so that we may capture him. Mm -hmm. So their aggressiveness had increased greatly when they saw the power with which he was operating with. Mm, that was very powerful. And, and as, as, as we, 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 we went on, we seen that um, Jesus now has become very wanted in, in the place that he's supposed to go back and to die. Mm. So we, we can see that we are approaching the end of his ministry and how he's going to die. Because now, uh, as she, you said, that uh, it's like the most wanted picture of him and that kind of poster has been placed everywhere. Anyone that found Jesus, you will get uh, some money or something. Mm. All kinds of things were happening because mm. they wanted to take him out very quickly. And now a lot of people too have come from different various countries, nearby mm. countries, and they have come in to celebrate Jesus Christ, uh, to celebrate the Passover. Passover. And now they are hearing about Jesus Christ, that there's this new guy that is most wanted, and the Pharisees are looking for him. Mm. And so it, it's even spreading Jesus' ministry, and it's making Jesus even more known. Because the moment they hear, people will say, ah, but what, what did he do? The guy is raising the dead. The guy is opening the blind eyes. The guy is doing this and that. And then, then why did they want to kill him? Mm. Because, and so the, everybody now will know the reason why the Pharisees and the high priests and everybody wants to mm. kill Jesus. But the things that keep coming to my mind is that God is touching your situation. Mm. Prophetically, God it says that you said your problem is dead. But he's saying that he's just about to resurrect your problem. If you can just humble yourself and worship him for who he is. If you can humble yourself and worship him and call upon his name any time that you need him. And break down. Let this stony heart be broken. I pray for somebody that, you know, mm. your heart is so hard against God. You hate the things of God. You hate men of God. You hate everything that has to do with God. But God is touching you right now. Amen. Do not harden your heart because this is your day of salvation. Yes. And the Lord is moving very fast into your life and is doing all, is rearranging everything for your own good. He said the plans that he has towards you are not evil, but they are good to give you an expected end. Mm. So at this moment, may you yourself mm. take yourself out of the misery mm. and cry unto God that God, I'm sorry for being hard against you. I'm sorry for being difficult. I'm sorry for not believing. Mm. I'm sorry. Help me. Yes. And in turn, it's, there are some people in your life that if they are not going to help you to get closer to God, push them aside and pray for them. Because salvation is an individual thing. Everybody will fight for his own salvation. Mm. You can, on the judgment day, you can't say that, God, my friends made me hate you. No. Mm. <laughs> it is up between you and God. So you need to take a stand for the Lord. The Lord is mighty. He's powerful. You saw the case over here. Somebody who has been dead for four days. But the Lord has power to resurrect. Mm. So even though that you prayed before and Jesus, you didn't see Jesus in your situation... I want you to pray again, and I want you to lift up your right hand, and I'm going to pray with you that God will step in your situation. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. Your word is powerful. Your word has carried us this far. Your word has brought us to a perfect end of the program. And I pray that, Lord God, you say that we will not leave your presence without being blessed. And that this day we pray that, Lord, every situation before you, before the viewers, the listeners, I pray the Lord God, may all the situation collapse. All the problems collapse. May every death, every death rise back and live on. I pray the Lord God, you open chapters and open doors for your people. 
I rebuke every demonic entity, rulers of darkness, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, every dark evil spirit and dark angel, legions that are afflicting your people. Mm. I pray this moment that, Lord, may they be put in their chains and may they be sent back to the pit where they belong. I pray for a new move. I pray for your power. I pray for your grace. I pray that, Lord God, you will sanctify every viewer's mind and heart and you will bless them. And I pray that, Lord, whatever that they've lost in the past, you bring it alive in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I've prayed. Amen. 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 And you can invite them to church. Amen. You are most welcome to our services where the power of God is, 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 is really, really there. It is we just give the glory to god we just mm. give him the glory you know there have been so many testimonies so many wonderful wonderful works of of the holy spirit it is just amazing so we want you to come and experience what we are talking about mm. we are fellowshipping at sophia loon for kets who's rolf's got on 16. on sundays we have sundays we have church service which starts at 12 o'clock tuesdays and thursdays we have prayer and deliverance service which starts at 6 p.m. and on Saturdays we have morning glory morning glory is a new program starting at 9 a.m. it's just two hours 9 to 11 so you can come and be a part of this and trust me your lives will never be the same also don't forget to go on our Facebook page Action Chapel Sweden and give us your prayer requests your your testimonies or things that are happening in your life go ahead and share it with us we look forward to hearing from you amen amen god truly bless you and we thank you for all the comments and with the things we are getting we pray that anytime you have you come across this flyer it is our flyer for action chapel sweden mm. make sure that you you take one of it keep it in your in your bag or your pocket somewhere and then let this flyer be a reminder of you visiting the church. And mm. you should come there, come there with a friend and come there with your problems. And you see how quickly God will move. Mm. God is moving so mightily. We are, there's countless of mm. testimonies that we, um, every service before we go into the word, that people share. There are all kinds of things that are coming out of people. God is really blessing his people. And God loves you and he wants you to be a part of the blessing that is going on. Mm. So do not exempt yourself and become, uh, become a hustler or struggling. <laughs> but just come for the true blessings of God because God loves you and God wants you. Don't, be yeah. a, don't become a prodigal son. That's what I want to say. <laughs> a prodigal son. Somebody who doesn't listen to mm. God. Somebody who knows there's God there but he will not go there mm. till he hits the rock bottom. Mm. And then he will come to God. Mm. We love you. And we pray for you God every day. God bless you. God bless Love you. you. Bye Keep bye. watching. Bye bye. <laughs>
Bowling Friends.